All right, all right, and welcome back to Do News. I am your host, the King of Do, and uh, we're going to go over some news today. We're going to skip the market update because uh, it's been pretty steady for the last few days. Really strong consolidation. It uh, seems like people have picked the side that they're on, and maybe we're just waiting it out until uh, August comes. Um, also, there's less volume in particular because some places are just suspending the use of Bitcoin in general. And as you guys know, uh, Bitcoin kind of runs the show. So when it's hard to get money in or out, uh, things kind of just come to a little bit of a standstill. Uh, but it seems like maybe people have picked their sides. Things are settled down. So what will happen next? That is the question. Who is to say? Who is to know? Maybe the king of do knows. So we're going to get right to that. And I'll give you guys my prediction on all of that fun. But you're going to have to stick through the news to get my prediction. Here we go. First blood. First blood coin is uh, officially started its open beta. And... Um, I'm a big fan of esports. I cover a lot of esports. I go to esporting events. I will be at the international, uh, the Dota 2 event, which is one of the largest esports events in the world. Largest prize pool for sure. A year after year breaking records. It's very cool, interesting stuff. You should check it out. Um, definitely check it. It'll be on ESPN, and uh, you're gonna want to watch. You can also catch it on Twitch if you're more of a Twitch person. But the international is absolutely worth your time checking out. First Blood in particular works um, on some Dota stuff. Sorry for that background noise. Um, essentially, that is the, the first place that you can actually uh, go and actually use the coin if you actually wanted to compete. Uh, so you can actually use the coins to compete um, on Dota 2. Of course, there's going to be plenty of other games, but Dota being one of the more fiscally supported games. not I wouldn't say one of. I would say, without a doubt, beyond a shadow of a doubt, exponentially more popular when it comes to people's wallets than any other uh, game in the world right now. Um, the amount of money that goes into this game, it, it very clearly is the type of game that attracts people with uh, pockets, deep pockets. Um, I know that I personally play a game and put more money into that game than any other game in my life, probably all games combined. Um, and it is a great game. I love supporting the community and the game because it, it's very true to the core um, and uh, very, very long-standing game in the community. But that's a different different type of news. I'm not going to go into esports, guys. I just get a little passionate about when I see a good game of any kind, board game, video game. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what your favorite strategic game is to play. I'd love to know. Uh, I'm about to go to PAX here soon. And uh, looking forward to uh, buying some new games at PAX 2017 in Seattle. Uh, make sure that uh, if you're going to be there, you let me know in the comments. We will meet up for sure. But First Blood, open beta, now available. Hop on over there. Check it out if you are a gamer. Moving on. Uh, Vitalik had a nice little um, interesting back and forth statement here on Twitter. He says, crypto is the honey badger, not because any specific project or team has good crypt uh, cypherpunk values. Sorry, It's because there are too many projects slash teams to kill. I really uh, liked the little conversation we, we have here from, from this gentleman, who I'm not familiar with, but maybe some of you are. And uh, he says, sounds like you're diluting the meaning. By this claim, any popular open source application is Honey Badger, or any industry in general. Vitalik responded, rephrasing. So this is him basically saying, let me not use Honey Badger. I'm using that incorrectly. My bad. I'm human. I'm not perfect. Pretty cool to admit fault. Um, I believe the crypto space will be harder to shut down the more distinct and politically independent projects there are. And that is a more important factor than the moral qualities or political values of any specific team or project. So that's pretty cool to uh, have uh, you know the almighty Vitalik come out and talk about how he feels about the crypto space right now. Talking about how um, there's so many different projects out there right now. There's so many coins that you can buy into because you believe in it, right? You believe in what they're trying to accomplish. It could be business related. It could be politically related. 
It could be related based on fun, just like First Blood in eSports. Um, and it could also just be based on community. Um, maybe you have stumbled across a, a, a particular blockchain or cryptocurrency that you're just really in love with the community. I personally uh, really enjoy uh, the Pivx community. I think that there's something just like kind of cool and special about those people. Um, and uh, I've talked many times about uh, Leakcoin1337. Super, super small. I believe it's just like maybe one or just the two, maybe just a couple devs on it, but those people are just so sweet, genuine, and nice. It's like getting to talk with a real person that actually does this stuff as a hobby, and I think that's really cool, um, and, I, and I hope uh, and wish them success um, in what they do. And um, so anyhow, you know, that's what's cool about this, about this whole entire concept. Uh, all this decentralization that's going on here through this technology, it gets me really excited and uh, I'm really passionate about it because uh, a lot of people are being set free and it's not just fiscally set free, maybe it's socially uh, set free or set free in some type of, uh, you know, business application or something like that. But it, it remains to be seen and we're still in the infancy, but this stuff is going to change the world, guys. Um, I don't know if I got to talk about it much. I did it on my live stream, so most of you didn't see. I don't go. I didn't list that one public, um, but I got to ask the great Woz, uh, Steve Wozniak. Actually, uh, was at the Digital Summit in Portland, Oregon, and uh, I got to attend that. Very fortunate to uh, attend that, and some great speakers and great content, all about digital, uh, mostly in regards to business. Everything from marketing to content, um, anything you can think of that's digital. It was probably going on there, and um, I got to ask him a question in the in the entire room. He was the keynote, uh, you know, special guest, and I got to uh, raise my hand and actually uh, get called upon. What did you think I asked him about, guys? I asked him about blockchain. I asked him specifically how he felt um, about blockchain. Um, you know, if it's something that he follows. I asked him if he follows the industry specifically. Then I s followed up with a second question. Um, and said, uh, in your opinion, in the next five years, what will it disrupt the most? What industry will be disrupted the most? Um, the, the great Waz, basically, you know, he lives in the Silicon Valley area. He's invested in a bunch of things and supports a bunch of things like that. He's a super, super cool guy. Um, and he, he reminded me so much of all of you guys and all of us here in this crazy space right now. You know, he told a story that was really cool about how he used to, um, he basically was the first person to provide uh, internet to all of the schools in his area. No joke, guys. He hooked up internet to his house and set up an antenna on his roof. Through that antenna, he uh, sent out uh, internet access to all the public schools. Now, you guys got to think about that. This was, you know, in the 90s. And so, like, you know, hardly any of the schools used Internet. Very, very little usage. So it totally was uh, applicable. It could be done through the radio waves like that. Um, and super, super fascinating um, to hear some of his stories like that about uh, being so early in, in the space that he was in and being a part of really cool technology. He even was very, very humble in that. Um, and this gives, I think this should all give you a lot of hope for you guys wanting to get in the blockchain space. Um, you know, he's an engineer. He's not really a, a programmer at first, more of an engineer first and then programmer. Um, but he really um, talked about how, you know, he had all his success and really he's, he's not really anything special. He, he never wanted to uh, work for big corporations. Uh, he didn't really like it or anything like that. Um, he just he just wanted to do full-time engineering. That's really what he wanted to do, and that's all he was looking for. And, um, you know, he didn't want to play politics and things like that, which is ironic um, that, uh, of course, he had all that success um, and went through all that. But um, super cool guy. What did he say about blockchain? Well, he spent a little time talking to the crowd about what it is, and he really, really likes the concept. Um, and he talked about, you know, how it can be used for the healthcare system and things like that. So he knows he knows enough to at least talk about it in front of a crowd to a degree. He doesn't know it as well as probably you know it or me, 
uh, people that are passionate about. I assume you're watching this because you're pretty passionate about this stuff and you really want to understand it and you want to stay on top of it. And he, he wasn't quite like that. Um, I would love to have the great Waz, uh, you know, tune in sometime. I should have should have gave myself a plug there for him, but I didn't. Um, but here's the one thing he said. He didn't have any predictions other than this one thing. He said, blockchain is definitely not going away. It's here to stay. And uh, I've, I feel so strongly about that, guys. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, there's so many things to be investing in right now. And so many things. It's going to be fascinating in 10 years. How many of them fail and how of them, how many, you know, turn into something amazing. But at the end of the day, um, this is a great, great place to be. Uh, whether you're looking to get into the industry, uh, work in it, be a part of something, just 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 be a part of something, right? Just just join um, a community or a project. There's so many needs right now um, in this space uh, for traditional business people. Uh, they need marketers. They need people who can create content. They need people who can, um, you know, do sales and and drive drive adoption and uh, be evangelists even. Right? Um, there is just so much potential here, and we're just getting started. It's really exciting to be in the know and uh, to be able to pay attention so that maybe someday uh, when you're presented with an opportunity, you can evaluate the potential it has for you and your life. And that's really neat. It's a cool place to be in. Um, you know, will you, will you or I ever actually be a part of a blockchain uh, ecosystem? Most likely. Mm -hmm. But working there is kind of different. I don't know if I'll ever get the opportunity. Um, it's so suppressed and pushed out of the areas that I live in that I would have to leave the country. And, uh, and uh, you know, I've, I've looked at different ways of uh, how that could look like working for a decentralized or autonomous uh, organization of some sort or something of that nature. Um, and, of course, legitimate blockchains, you know, like where in the world are these companies popping up? And luckily, there's a few states in the United States that are starting to uh, adopt this kind of stuff um, and make some laws that are favorable. However, it's going to come down to the federal government and we will get to that very shortly. So let's talk about Bitcoin here. Uh, you guys heard that there was a big suspension on Bitcoin and it, it kind of scared people out. Well, uh, you know, that it's over, kind of. It, it kind of felt like they were doing like a test, if that makes sense. Like, they were testing the suspension before they really needed to do it because they, they basically lifted it, right? Um, Japan exchanges and merchants basically, you know, they all paused um, and turned it back on. And I was reading through this article and, and I saw this quote um, that um, was pretty cool. And I'm trying to find it here while I'm talking. I apologize. I lost track of it here. But essentially, um, Basically, I think this is it right here. Uh, yeah, this restaurant manager, he said that he's seen a rise in customers wanting to pay with digital currency over the last few months. And I really like that he says digital currency. He's being very vague. He's saying, uh, you know, not Bitcoin specifically. And he said, I think that it is a uh, useless measure for improving Bitcoin and I hope stability will continue. Um, and essentially, that kind of alludes to, you know, they're, they're trying to be safe in Japan in case this all, you know, goes crazy and haywire. Um, you know, in case there's like a crazy fork or something like that. Um, you know, people are still concerned. Um, and, and it's nice to know that someone's, you know, higher up in Japan is concerned. But we'll just have to wait and see. But services are continuing as usual. Be expecting suspensions on exchanges. Um, that is going to drastically reduce the amount of volume happening. Now, you guys got to understand that this volume is going to create this compression, this, this, uh, um, uh, putting, you know, it's like taking a, a soda can, a Mountain Dew soda can, a Mountain Dew, and shaking it up, um, and that pressure is just building. And the problem is, is we won't know until, you know, all the markets come back online, if everything is going to shoot up or down, it's really unfortunate too because some exchanges will be, you know, doing just fine. So what might what might happen? Uh, people in Japan might not actually be able to sell um, on their exchange, even though the market's going way down and they want out. Or maybe the market's going through the roof and they're upset because they can't buy and things like that. But at the end of the day, um, there's going to be some additional action, some type of action that is either positive or negative on the market. It won't be level; it'll be up or down. 
And um, we just have to wait and see what happens there in Japan when they uh, go with the suspension. I expect to see many other countries follow suit, and I expect a lot of businesses to suspend any Bitcoin acceptance for quite a while, um, especially since a lot of these guys are going through certain services where they're actually relying on a third party, basically all of them, right? Um, so they're all working through a third party um, a company that's letting them have a point of sale system that accepts Bitcoin and they're probably all going to get suspended. So if you guys could imagine like you can't spend your US dollar for a day, um, that would be really weird and probably not looked upon with uh, much favor in the markets. But um, it's just crazy. This is so different. I, I like to think about this guys in the future. Like, come with me 10 years into the future, not two or three. Come way into the future with me when this stuff is, like, super adopted and everyone's using it, okay? Um, I don't know what cryptocurrency is. Maybe everyone's using cryptocurrencies. Maybe China's digital currency takes over the world. doesn't matter. We're all using digital currencies. What happens when we need to, like, fork for the first time? Maybe um, through quantum computing or something crazy, someone actually hacks the world uh, currency system. Right? Super fascinating stuff to think about what life would be like for just one day. Just one day. The amount of chaos. Because <laughs> you can't spend your money for just one day. It's interesting. It makes me think that someone would create some type of backup side chain. You know, um, maybe there's a cryptocurrency that will be the backup for those moments where the core chain uh, needs to adjust or have some updates and it's scaring people. So, anyhow. Super fascinating. That's the type of stuff I like to think about. But I like hearing that in Japan, more people, normal people, you and me, not business owners, are wanting to use their digital currencies. In India, same thing's been happening. Um, Bangalore had 50 plus merchants added this month. Um, there's a nice little Indian Bitcoin hotspot. So this little part of town or something like that. Um, seeing some adoption and you know I'm just I'm just showing you guys this stuff because I'm, I'm curious if you guys are starting to notice this okay so we had this huge drive in interest and a huge drive in investors uh, since April right and even the market's starting to recover we're, we're really starting to make some strides uh, we may go back up to over 100 billion here any second and so that uh, is exciting right uh, things have recovered and things are steady are you guys seeing this too? I feel like there's some type of adoption happening, um, more more awareness that we're seeing responses come, right? Um, I have more people than ever making Bitcoin jokes at me at work. Um, I, that's that one. That joke's for you, Brian. Yeah, he does it all the time. Um, but yeah, Bitcoin in particular, um, very well known. Basically, people think cryptocurrency. That's the only one they know, um, and uh, it's really fascinating. Even people that you know don't understand Ethereum think that it's maybe some type of Bitcoin thing, um, or it is Bitcoin. It's just a new name or something like that. So I'm getting this sense and this feeling of adoption, and it's really exciting. And um, I just want to know if you see anything like that. Leave a link in the comments below. Let me know if you've noticed something. Maybe even in your local area. That would fascinate me. Some adoption that you've noticed in your local area. I've yet to see any place other than one ATM in my entire town that uh, basically can um, you can purchase Bitcoin or sell it. So still looking look, still looking for the place. That place is gonna get my business. I will probably live stream with you guys when I finally find a place. So um, you know, we'll we'll see. Uh, maybe it'll be in New York um, for a conference I'm going to. I uh, maybe I'll track down a Bitcoin place, um, but nothing around here. That's for sure. Super exciting news. Okay, so the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission has approved an institutional Bitcoin derivative platform. Okay, that's a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Let's put it this way. You can use U.S. dollars and actually get your money invested in this stuff. That's what I'm talking about. It's going to include Bitcoin and Ethereum. What else could it include? I don't know. I do not know, but this stuff is set to launch this fall. So if you've been looking to try to get your U.S. dollar um, working for you, maybe you've got 401ks that you know, or Roth IRAs, or so you've got some type of investment vehicle or platform that you can put your money 
into the markets yourself and you can choose what you put it into, well, I have great news for you. This fall, scheduled for this fall, I don't have the exact dates, but trust me, I'll be looking for it. I will let you know when I find it. You guys are going to, you're finally going to be able to do it here in America. This is huge. This is huge. Finally. Finally some news here in America. I am excited. Today is a good day. Today is a good day. I love that this news is a day ahead, by the way. I love that. Uh, it's somewhere on this planet. Someone woke up early and wrote that out for us. All right. Uh, real quick, Ant Shares, also known as Neo now. Their white paper is available. It's over on GitHub. If you haven't read it, it's actually pretty short. It's not their uh, original white paper. It's actually an updated white paper. And if you don't know what Ant Shares is or Neo, make sure you go check it out. Um, it's going to sound a whole lot like Ethereum. It has some pros that Ethereum doesn't have. It has some cons and things like that. However, absolutely worth reading the white paper as it is a legitimate chain at this time as far as uh, the consensus goes. <laughs> um, you, know, the, you know, I believe it's uh, top 15 now um, in market share. And so make sure you guys go check that one out. Very, very cool. Um, FBI. Okay, so the FBI... Um, has basically uh, started getting worried about cryptocurrency, specifically Monero. Woo! Um, very, very interesting that they picked that one. I think it's more of a scare tactic because it's the biggest one. They're basically saying, oh, it's just scary stuff, uh, you know, because it's focused on privacy. And it's like, well, yeah, <laughs> like, it's kind of the point of it. Um, and their statement is, is that there are obviously going to be issues of some of the more difficult to work with cryptocurrencies uh, when they become popular. Monero is one that comes to mind where it's not very obvious what the transaction path is or what the actual value of the transaction is except the end users. Um, yeah, get used to it. I don't know what they're going to do. You can, yeah, sure, you can get worried about it. But at the end of the day, guess what? Um, you have no idea what I did with $10 today at lunch. So, except the end user. So, I don't get it. The, it's the same as the U.S. dollar. Like, what are they worrying about? I don't understand what the fear is. It's like, just because they have no reason. If they're worried about Monero, or any privacy coin for that matter, they probably should get rid of cash. Oh wait, that would require them to have digital currency. Ooh. This is retarded. That's a really strong word. I apologize if I offended anybody. This is this is really, 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 really ignorant. Lack of knowledge. Um the amount of money that the government's about to pour into, you know, anti cyber um, in the next year is literally in the billions, guys. It's not a joke. Uh, they, they're they fully aware. They know what's going on in this kind of stuff. Uh, this stuff is just... They think they think that we don't know or, or something like what we're talking about. Maybe they're trying to scare the common average person away from this stuff. Like, that's the whole point. That's the whole point is like, no, like... They literally have just admitted that they're never going to be able to know what you did in your transaction. If anything, it's like validating it. Like, Monero should be up on this news. That's, right? Anyhow. So, all that being said, um, very, very interesting that uh, we're getting these statements from the FBI. Uh, BlockNet, breaking BlockNet prepares the launch, production, blockchain, and service that generates its tokens' intrinsic value. So, BlockNet is a decentralized application platform. It's got some pretty cool stuff, but I'm just going to read to you real quick, because I've been a fan of BlockNet for a while. You guys have been around for a long time. I, I kind of like what they're doing. They have a unique place. Um, they definitely uh, got... They definitely got some hype, guys, in the last round. That, that price went way up. Um, it was good times for sure. And um, But I want to talk about the strategic advantages. And I'm going to read this straight from their website, um, which is blocknet.co. 
Um, make sure you check it out um, yourself because I won't read all of it here. Um, but essentially they have some strategic advantages, uh, very strategic advantages um, that, they, that they talk about. And I'm just going to uh, run through these real quick so you guys have an idea of exactly what this uh, you know, change and update is about. Um, the launch of the production blockchain, which is what this update is, it's, they're calling it a production blockchain, presents several, several strategic advantages. Firstly, it allows for a change of code base to one that is correctly forked from Bitcoin Core, significantly simplifying the task of implementing the Bitcoin improvement proposals and thus speeding up development. Okay, so step one there, they're going to develop faster. Okay. That's the, that's the first advantage. Okay. Secondly, it will allow the removal of ICO burns address, which has historically not been correctly parsed by blockchain explorers, causing a perennial confusion as to the blocknet's coin supply. Increased consistency of information will boost confidence and will enable investors to better gauge the block's fundamentals. Okay. So there's been a little confusion. They're clearing that up and uh, they believe that that's going to in attract investors. They, you know, they believe that they're going to get more money now because they fixed a problem. I didn't even know a problem existed. They knew a problem existed. They knew that they were losing out on potential investors. We probably are already too late to that party because, you know, this news has been out. So maybe the price moved on it. I did not look. But um, maybe there's some money uh, coming in now or soon. Thirdly, the rollout of the service nodes includes a voting system which will provide a decentralized governance of network protocol related changes. Pending community support, this will provide a solid financial basis for the block net future uh, by creating new funds to pay developers and cover marketing costs. Very cool. So it's going to work a lot like uh, um, probably like Dash as far as like uh, people can raise money for... Uh, sorry about the noise guys. My dog is being bad. Um, so, yeah, Dash does some things like that where people will raise money together and the governments to actually pay for marketing stuff and things like that. And a lot of, a lot of blockchains actually do that. Um, but also to pay for developers, too. So um, actually uh, in speeding up development by being able to pay for them, and that's critical to success. It's critical to generating a community, and um, that's great. That's great. I believe BlockNet is also on Azure, so we may see some very, very quick adoption on here. Finally, with the ability to trade directly from one wallet comes the freedom of having to be at the mercy of a centralized exchange at critical points in coins history, such as Bitcoin at the end of this month when it reaches a crucial juncture that may hard fork. Most exchanges will freeze, but with the block nets, exchange traders are only limited by protocols themselves. There you go, guys. We just were talking about that. We're talking about everybody getting frozen up. People can't exchange, can't trade. Um, you know, the decentralized exchange here on the BlockNet is pretty legit. Um, and it's pretty exciting what they're trying to get done here. Uh, trying to connect all the different blockchains, so, um, or at least the currencies, um, in that sense. So, some other cool features is that, you know, the annual stake reward is, uh, essentially roughly about 9%. Um, the consensus algorithm will be proof of stake. Block time at 2.5 minutes and um, some feature parity with Bitcoin Core. Um, and here's something that's really intriguing to me, and uh, I'd love to know what you think. The code base is Bitcoin Core plus Pivx Masternode implementation. And they don't really talk about that much. And I want to know more, because I'm a huge Pivx fan. So what are they doing here with the Pivx Masternode implementation? Does that mean Masternodes are becoming available? I don't know. They don't talk about it. And um, I don't know enough about, uh, you know, BlockNet in particular uh, to, to know what it's like to get one of those masternodes up and running. If you have information on that, uh, I'm asking you to help me find it, guys. I want to know um, what we need to do. Because here it says enforcement of the 5,000 block requirement to run a service node. Right? So, you know, it's interesting. It's very, very interesting. You know, they're, they're talking about it, but 
you know, it, it's not really, really clear on exactly what the investment is, what I need to set up, where I can go to support it, um, or if I'm even eligible, right? Um, those kind of things I think are very important. Um, so if you guys can find that, please let me know. Blocknet, making some very, very big uh, leaps in development. Um, this is significant. This is a lot of work that's been done uh, just in the last few months, um, and uh, so it's exciting. They're making real progress. This this blockchain is legit, and uh, that's why I'm a fan of it. Um, there's not too many out there where it's like, hey, you know, there's just not too many out there you have a lot of confidence in when you get this far down um, the list of potential blockchain uh, currencies, you know, like after you get past the top 20, it, gets, it starts getting sketch in a hurry. Um, but these guys, um, big fan, big fan of this one. Um, and I think you guys should check it out. Block now. Okay. That's it from me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of do news. Um, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. If you like this content, leave a comment below. Love your guys' comments. Love talking with you, chatting with you and make sure you head on over to steam it and, uh, hang out with me on steam it. Really appreciate the support over there. You guys' upvotes on Steam it mean the world to me. Um, and uh, really believe that um, you know those those are uh, those upvotes are going to go a long, long ways for me and my family. Um, as that is a primary way that I actually um, in, it, I, I literally look at that as my return on my investment uh, for for the majority of this content. So I really appreciate you guys over there helping me out and. Uh, Hope to see you over there soon. So with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed my new backdrop here. I got some new uh, Star Wars Legos and I got some Mountain Dew stuff and a little bit of Dota 2. Um, not sure if you could eye it, but if you stuck around that long, uh, there you have it. And uh, before you go, my Bitcoin prediction, August 1st, nothing is going to happen. <laughs> and we are going to move onward and upward. Um, I have very, very high hopes for October. I've been saying it for a long time. Just there's just I guess got a feeling about October, and that's purely feel. So that is a complete opinion, and not financial advice of any kind. Um, but I think that the markets in general, we may see a new wave begin, and uh, we may, you know, as people go back to school and it starts to get horribly wet and rainy in the northern hemisphere, where the majority of the world's wealth lies. Um, I think we're going to see people spend some time online, maybe doing some research, maybe uh, reading an article or two and getting intrigued uh, by all the amazing headlines about Bitcoin and Ethereum and uh, every other coin that you love. So uh, make sure you guys uh, stay in the know, make sure you subscribe and uh, so you can uh, be with me. Um, through all the fun up and downs. I hope you guys are enjoying the green as of late. It's delicious and it's nutritious and keep eating that. All right, so that's it for me. I am the King of Dew. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. May the force be with you.